Volcanoes are active all over the world and we hear news of eruptions almost every week. The greatest danger is posed by eruptions of supervolcanoes. The Phlegraean fields are currently being closely monitored because the risk of an eruption here is increasing almost daily. And now this, another supervolcano is bubbling. An enormous eruption shook Yellowstone National Park in recent days where one of the world's largest supervolcanoes is dormant. After hours of worry, it is now clear that this eruption will have no further consequences. There is no danger of the entire Yellowstone volcano exploding. However, scientists have now discovered something completely different under Yellowstone, and that is almost more worrying. We take a close look at this in this video and explain how big the impact of an eruption would be. Welcome, friends. Today it's going to be explosive, because we're talking about one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes on Earth and my subscriber numbers are just as explosive. My goal for this year is 100,000 subscribers, so I would be very happy if you would now press the subscribe button and activate the bell. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, if you Google Yellowstone, you will now find almost only something about the series Yellowstone with Kevin Costner. Write to me, who of you knows that? My wife always watches it and I always watch it with one eye. But I've been digging through all the Kevin Costner pictures and found some exciting new information about the Yellowstone supervolcano for you because the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO for short, has just published its new annual report and volcanologists have also gained some really explosive insights into past lava flows and a potential eruption. So hold on tight. First, the basics. The Yellowstone supervolcano is located in northwestern Wyoming and extends over parts of Montana and Idaho. The Yellowstone caldera, a gigantic volcanic depression, was formed about 650,000 years ago by a massive eruption of rhyolite magma, which spread ash over large parts of North America. This eruption was really something and is one of three catastrophic eruptions that have taken place in the last 2.1 million years. So Yellowstone really belongs to the Champions League of Dangerous Volcanoes, the volcanic creme de la creme, so to speak. This is how the AI imagines the volcanic creme de la creme. The caldera itself is a complex structure that has been shaped by repeated volcanic activity over thousands of years. Since the last major eruption, 28 smaller rhyolite eruptions have continued to shape and fill the interior of the caldera. These eruptions manifested themselves through lava flows that still shape the landscape of Yellowstone today. Unfortunately, I have never been there, but it is definitely on my to-do list to travel to the USA at some point and produce a documentary about the Yellowstone volcano on site. Feel free to write to me in the comments if you would be interested in that. There is reason enough to worry because volcanologists have now discovered something crazy and fundamentally changed our understanding of lava flow eruptions in the Yellowstone caldera. Until recently, scientists assumed that the lava flows during past eruptions occurred over long periods of time. However, new data suggests that several lava flows occurred simultaneously or at short intervals. Researchers at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory have dated lava flow eruptions from 160,000 years ago to 70,000 years ago and found that they occurred in tight clusters. This suggests that instead of isolated events, multiple lava flows erupted simultaneously from different volcanic vents within the caldera. According to the latest research, the 22 rhyolite eruptions, known as the Central Plateau Member Rhyolites, occurred in five short episodes. Each episode could have lasted up to 400 years, and these episodes, in which two to nine lava flows erupted simultaneously, show that intracaldera eruptions, that is smaller eruptions in the long existing large caldera, are dramatic events, much more dramatic than previously thought, and these new findings in turn have a significant impact on the assessment of the probability of an eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. On the one hand, they show that intracaldera eruptions are more intense and complex than previously thought, but on the other hand, they suggest that the long-term eruption rate in Yellowstone could be lower than previously assumed. If the central plateau member rhyolites were formed by five events instead of the 22 previously assumed, this means that eruptions are rarer but more intense. Or to put it another way, it doesn't bang often, but when it does, it's good night. Geologist Mark Stelton from the US Geological Survey puts it this way, intracaldera eruptions are more dramatic than previously thought. Instead of isolated events in which a single lava flow erupts, intracaldera eruptions appear to be multiple eruptions occurring simultaneously in different parts of the caldera. And what does the new annual report say about the probability of an eruption? That is, of course, what the American geologists are monitoring with the greatest care, because a worst-case scenario would devastate large parts of the United States. 
here on this map, you can see how large the death zone and the ash area would be. That would be bad and therefore monitoring is essential. One of the most important aspects of monitoring the Yellowstone volcano is the evaluation of seismic and geodetic data. Between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes are registered in the region every year. Most of them are so small that they are not felt, but these quakes are closely linked to volcanic activity and thus provide clues to possible changes in the magma reservoir under the caldera. And although the new findings suggest that past eruptions were more intense, there is currently no evidence that a new eruption is imminent. According to the YVO, the rhyolite magma chamber under Yellowstone is currently only 5-15% to molten and viscous, so there may not be enough magma material under the caldera for an eruption, so Yellowstone is currently lacking the oomph for a volcanic apocalypse. Of course, smaller eruptions can never be ruled out, as happened a few days ago, without destroying North America but beyond. About 70,000 years ago, rhyolite lava flows erupted from the supervolcano, and although this eruption changed the geology of southwestern Yellowstone National Park, it was not exactly catastrophic for life on the planet. And although the magma chamber is currently providing reassuring data, even a bad eruption can never be ruled out 100%, Science journalist Tom Hale writes, Nevertheless, anything is possible. The surrounding geological strata could collapse, or the volcanic chambers could receive a new magma injection, reviving the monster from below. If a major eruption were to occur at Yellowstone today, the effects would be felt around the world. Large areas of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming would be covered by pyroclastic flows of hot gas and volcanic material. Estimates vary, but some suggest that up to 90,000 people could be killed immediately. The climate of the entire planet would change drastically. A massive global cooling would probably be the result of the volcanic aerosols in the atmosphere. But if you're already getting worried and want to take out volcanic insurance, here's a reassuring fact from the new annual report of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. In addition to seismic monitoring, scientists use GPS and INSAR data, which stands for Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, to measure ground deformation, because the more deformation of the terrain, the more volcanic activity. And these data show that the Yellowstone caldera is currently experiencing a subsidence of 2 to 3 centimeters per year. The volcanologists estimate this to be rather low, so it can also be assumed that the magma chamber is currently not experiencing any significant accumulation of magma that could lead to an eruption, so peace, joy, and harmony in Yellowstone Park for the time being. As soon as something changes, I'll let you know immediately, so subscribe to the channel directly. And if you haven't had enough of volcanoes yet, click on the video shown in which we talk in detail about the effects that the Hunga Tonga eruption of 2022 has on the climate today. Don't miss it. And as always, feel free to drop by the Astro Shop. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.